Hi, everybody. Welcome back to reInvent 2024. You're watching The Cube. I'm Dave Vellante. My land is here, a Cube guest, Cube alum. Great to see you again. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for inviting me, Dave. It's been a while. What What's new? What are you up to? What's exciting you at reInvent 24? Well, there's so much to hear and to learn about at reInvent. But in my area, we are all about changing how people think about solving problems. And we're doing that in two ways. We're doing that in data. And we're doing that in migration of Windows applications, VMware applications, and even mainframes. Okay, so and maybe we'll have time to talk about data, but let's talk about this Q developer. We're super excited about it. Mm -hmm. First of all, changing the whole software development lifecycle is really exciting. You know, bringing in, in, in AI. But what specifically are you targeting for transformations? You mentioned three, mainframe, .NET, and VMware. How should we think about those? Well, individually, each one of them is different because we're talking about different technologies. But let's just take Windows as a starting point. Uh, we have so many customers that want to do cost avoidance on Windows licensing that what we've done is in the Q developer experience, we've built the ability to help you migrate your Windows framework applications to Windows.NET Core that you can now run on EC2 Linux. It is transformative. And so we have uh, customers, we have Signet, uh, which is a financial company that yep. is out in Europe. And they started using an early version of Q Developer, the transformation capabilities of Summer. And they were able to migrate a Windows framework application that they had estimated would take them eight months. And they were able to reduce it to just a few days. And so that type of capability, when you think about it and you think about what AI gives you, which is the ability to do many of these migrations in parallel, you can think about that, how that just fundamentally transforms how you think about going from Windows to .NET Core and Linux. So what's the customer motivation there? That's modernization, it's simplification, cost, what are, what are they telling you? Well, it's two things. Windows, VMware, and mainframes all have similar threats. So in all of these cases, it is part of a company's strategy to move to the cloud. And moving to the cloud for Windows, VMware, and certainly for mainframes is actually a complex and hard task. Mm. And so what they tell us is that as part of my overall migration strategy, I don't want to leave anybody behind. I don't want to leave any application behind. And now what we've given them with Q Developer is a way to bring along the applications that were some of the hardest ones to get out of your data center and now just take them to the cloud. Okay. so. You, you mentioned there's varying degrees of difficulty mm -hmm. for each. Um, help us sort of rate them, if you will. So is, is, the, is the Windows piece a little easier than VMware, a little easier, or a lot easier than, than mainframe? Is that the yeah. correct sequence? That's, you're, you're pretty close. The thing about Windows is that you have a lot of Windows applications. You probably don't have as many VMware right. applications, but you have a lot of urgency to get them over to AWS right now, don't you? And for those VMware applications, the hardest thing is networking. The VM network and the any other network is quite different. And so what we've brought is we're bringing AI to the team. So in the past, we've talked about how AI helps the individual productivity. With Q Developer and our transformation capabilities, we're bringing AI to the team. And by our AI and Q Developer knows VMware networking knows VPC, AWS networking, knows EC2. It's a unique skill set to know all of them. And it takes something that is so complex and it turns it into a matter of minutes or days to do. And we think customers have told us and our early testing has told us that just that super complicated part about networking for VMware, it's uh, we reduce the time to do it by 80 times. It's a huge benefit. So again, Windows, got a lot of Windows applications. VMware, you probably have fewer, but you have a very complex step here about the networking. Mainframe, it's a whole different ball game. So not a lot of mainframes out there, but the original monolith is actually the mainframe. And the projects that involve mainframe takes years. And from our early testing, what customers tell us, we can reduce that by up to 50%. So I'll give you an example. We've worked very closely with Toyota Motor Group, North America. And if you think about their supply chain, most of their supply chain is running right now on mainframes that are over 40 years old. 
And when they evaluated what was it going to take to take this mainframe application and bring it to the cloud, they were told it was going to take years and billions of dollars. Yeah. And what we've done with Q is that we've brought AI to the table. We've brought AI to the team. And what they can do now, and they've used our Q developer to do this, is they can document what they have. And for anybody who runs a mainframe out there, that is a huge deal because there's not too many people left to understand the mainframe. Because it's all COBOL. Because it's all yeah, it's COBOL. Like... So not only can Q developer take millions of lines of COBOL and move it to Java, mm -hmm. but it can also document what is the business logic of this legacy application that you have, and how do I decompose the architecture, the monolith, into different modules so I can go ahead and put together a real plan. And that's what Toyota is doing now. And they said that just the the um, the uh, definition of what modules, those COBOL modules, the document documentation and the migration plan for them would have taken a month. And now it's down to days. Interesting. I mean, if you're right, it could be anywhere from two to five, even you know one and a half to five years to migrate a mainframe. So maybe you don't you don't go after the five year migrations first, but those you know, one to two years, maybe you can take them down to inside of a year, inside of even maybe a couple of quarters. And if you can, then that makes sense because typically you're freezing an application. And like you said, the business impact is not necessarily worth it. But, you know, the, you mentioned VMware. There's some motivation to do that. You actually have a lot of VMware customers. With VMware Cloud on AWS, that was actually quite successful. And then essentially that world has changed. So they need a path now. So that seems to me to be a pretty attractive offering for customers. Give me just a little tidbit on data. You and I, we talked about, we used to talk about storage, but years ago we started talking about, it's not about storage anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about data. And AI brings that, really shines a light on that, the importance of really having your data estate in order. So, you know, give us the bumper sticker on what you're seeing with customers. Well, we have well over a million data lakes running on S3. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as you know, I've worked on S3 now, Dave, for over 10 years. And one of the super fun parts about what we do is we watch and we talk to customers and we ask them what they want to do in the future. And Dave, we talk about 90% of our roadmap comes from customers telling us what they want. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. For S3, we raised the bucket limit to 1 million. Mm. And that is an example of customers saying, well, I would like to have more buckets. And now we give them up to a million buckets per account. Uh, but then 10% is what we intuit what customers name. And that's what we launched here at reInvent. We launched tables, S3 tables. We launched S3 metadata. And the reason we launched these capabilities is because the world is starting to move to thinking about how do I standardize both data storage and data access in the largest data lakes. And many of our customers use Apache Parquet and Apache Iceberg to do that. And so what we've done is we've looked at that and say, how do we make that so easy and so cost effective that customers can move to it and just get the benefits built in automatically using S3 storage? That's S3 tables. I'm super excited about S3 tables. Uh, basically, these are managed iceberg tables and it's dramatically simplifies. And why the reason why this is important is because the world wants to bring any compute engine to their data. They don't want to be locked in, and if they, they, can, they can use so many choices out there. But here's the thing, if I understand it correctly, is you are, when this goes GA, it's not GA yet, it's in preview, I think. Actually, right? we I, actually table, uh, S3 tables are GA, but, metadata right. is in preview. Now, metadata is not a snake, okay. okay? So if you think about all the data that you have, the semantic meaning of the data like your data classification, where the data came from, how the data is being used. That's all what I call data understanding. Mm -hmm. Data understanding often lives at the application layer in different places. And so different uh, customers build these huge systems to manage this very rich semantic understanding of the data. Now they have it built into S3. And so S3 metadata is in preview, but I will tell you, as we add more and more custom metadata, which is customer metadata and system metadata, we're adding it in a managed iceberg table. And the next generation of data lakes, Dave, they're going to be on object metadata because customers are going to run SQL queries to find the data they need for AI. 
they're going to need to find the data that they need for knowledge bases mm -hmm. or analytics. And that is going to be the next generation of data. And, and, and I, I think I'm correct in that when that goes GA, you will be able to, not only third-party clients will not only be able to read from your iceberg tables, but they'll be able to update as well. That's and so right. I'll be able to use whatever governance systems I want. I'll be able to read and write to those tables. So truly open format, which is what customers want. That's right. right. Apache, these are all Apache standards, which is why Spark Open Source works right now with it. One of the really interesting things I'm excited about is that Q for QuickSight, which is incredibly popular with customers these days, because you can use natural language to ask a question of your data. We are in preview now of that working with S3 tables. And so you can put your Parquet data, we, build, we bring you the iceberg managed table capability, and then your business users can build the most beautiful dashboards and they can understand the data they need so easily and simply with these new modifications. And I know it's not your swim lane, but the new improved SageMaker, mm -hmm. if you start to think about what how that simplifies the environment, getting your data act in order is so criti critical before you can really take advantage of, of AI and-, and That's AI. right, and S3 Tables now is a data source. Right. Because we integrate with Glue and we integrate with the next generation of SageMaker, we're a data source in that whole world. All your metadata is there, unified, technical mm -hmm. metadata, business metadata, operational, feeding up those agents. Mm -hmm. This is an exciting future. Mylan, I know you got to go. Thanks so much. Uh, I was so glad that we could spend some time together. Great to see you. Great to see you, Dave. All right, thank you. All right, keep it right there. John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We're in the house here at AWS reInvent 2024. We'll be right back right after this short break from Las Vegas. You're watching The Cube.